Hey, hey. Here. Okay. Watch out. Set. Sold. On. The Kerbal Space Program. The pinnacle of Kerbin's technological advancements. The well-known and well-respected organization discovering the wonders of the Kerbal system and engineering and scientific betterments for all Kerbal kind. And so today, they are utilizing complex shuttlecraft to construct orbital space stations and so much more. And yet, so many of these advancements are due to the hard work and determination of four pioneering Kerbonauts. These are the stories of the brave explorers who dared to travel faster and higher than those who preceded them. The trailblazers, the first ones to leave the confines of Kerbin's atmosphere, the first ones to orbit the planet, and yes, even the first ones to set foot on another celestial body. The Kerbals who would defy the Kraken and touch the Mun. Officially, the program knew them as Kerbalnaut Group One, but most of Kerbin knows them better as the Moho Four. They are the original four. She is the youngest of the original four, yet her story is one of the most unique. She is Valentina Kerman, the first female Kerbal to blast into space, but also the only female Kerbalnaut to fly a spacecraft solo. Her journey to the Kerbal Space Program is quite different from the others, but still nonetheless extraordinary. Valentina's story starts a fair ways north of the capital in a less populated region. Her father was a tank commander but died in a war when she was very young. This left her mother alone to care for her and her two siblings. Her mother decided to move the family closer to the city where she could work with textiles. Valentina was still able to attend school and did well. After graduating from secondary school, she first started working at a factory making wheels, then switched over to working in a textile factory she kept up her education, though, by taking college-level correspondence courses. It was during this time that Valentina discovered skydiving, and she loved it. She joined the local club and trained with them, and it was not long before she was performing her own jumps solo. And it was precisely her skill as a parachutist that caught the attention of the Kerbal Space Program, who, through the Air Force, recruited her. She saw this as a fortuitous turn for the better, and, for lack of a better term, she jumped at the opportunity. Since she and the other female recruits with her had never spent time in the military, they were all given the rank of private. It is important to know that at this time the space program paid all of its Kerbalnaut candidates through the military as pilots, with the added bonus of flight pay. After graduating from military flight school, she attained the rank of lieutenant. Then, it was all training, testing, and work specifically for the space program. In Val's case, she was assigned to work out emergency launch pad escape procedures and helped the program to develop a personal survival knife for Kerbalnauts to carry. The Kerbalnauts were paid as pilots. Now, in order to keep their flight pay bonuses from the military, they were required to keep up their flight hours. This became difficult as they had to beg to borrow jets from the Air Force and compete for planes from high-ranking officers with desk jobs that were also trying to keep their flight pay bonus. Val just so happened to have a friend who worked at an Air Force base in the region. This gave her access to some of the hottest, her words, planes that were on the base. This included supersonic fighter jets. Val was able to bring up the issue of flight time with some of the senior people in the government. Within very little time, the Kerbal Space Program had priority access to the new Delta Dagger to use for keeping the Kerbal Knots up on the required military flight time. The Kerbal Space Program was not very keen on this, but Jebediah greatly appreciated the new jets. Valentina continued her training, and soon it was her turn to launch into space. This was going to be the last of the Moho flights 
as the space program prepared for Project Twins. But Valentina's flight was still going to be of great value. This was to be the longest duration space flight yet attempted. The flight was scheduled to last multiple days. Not only that, but this was going to be the first flight of a female Kerbal. Would there be any differences in the way Val responded to spaceflight compared to her male colleagues? This flight would provide answers to these questions. The initial launch proved to be flawless, and soon she was orbiting the planet. For the flight, Val had chosen to go by the call sign Seagull. So, when she reached a stable orbit, she radioed, It is I, Seagull. Everything is fine. I see the horizon. It's a sky blue with a dark strip. How beautiful Kerbin is. Everything is going well. She was extremely excited to be in space, but she was also feeling something else. During this flight, she became a little nauseous. It was nothing very serious, just a little space sickness that even Kerbalnauts today sometimes get their first few days in space. After more than a day into her mission, Val also felt something else while she completed another milestone in space travel. She became the first Kerbal to have a bow movement in space. That's correct. She was the first one to poop in a spaceship. A goal of this mission was to see how the Kerbal body would handle longer periods of time in space. And this certainly is an issue that would need to be understood. Val also found the capsule to be just a little cramped. So, for future missions, it was decided that it would be nice to give crew just a little bit more space. Everything in the mission had been going well right up until it became time to deorbit. It was at this point that Val began having trouble with the capsule's navigation equipment. But she didn't panic. By looking out her window and finding her location relative to several stars and where exactly she was over Kerbin, she was able to plot her own burn. And even more than that, by rotating the capsule, she could use its slightly off center of mass to steer. So, using entirely manual control, she ended up landing the capsule to within only a couple of kilometers from the recovery personnel. Thus, cementing her status as one of the best pilots to ever come through the Kerbal Space Program. But this is not the end of Val's story, as she and the others would continue to push the boundaries of space travel. As soon, they would all be going to the MUN. This is Echo 3, and thanks for joining me to discuss the story of Valentina Kerman. I will see you next time.